Welcome back to another installment of the Criminals Turn Math video checkout guide. This is another important video, and if you want to avoid those crim eye rolls, a pretty crucial one for you to understand, we're going to be talking about avoiding bogeys. Now, if you haven't watched my previous video about how to count, then you need to go back and watch it before you watch this one, because the fundamentals in that how to count video are going to apply just on a larger scale to avoiding bogeys. If you don't understand the idea of counting down from your score rather than counting up, if you don't understand the idea of planning your entire turn ahead before you walk to the Aki, then this video is not going to help you. There's way too much information here for you to just memorize everything. You have to understand in order for you to apply these concepts. So go back and watch that video first. Once you're done, then you come in and watch this one. So again, we're talking about avoiding bogeys. So I've listed the bogey numbers over here for you, and I've also listed the good numbers. So what I like to think about personally is not what numbers I need to avoid, but rather the numbers I need to get to. We're talking about bogeys. There's only five numbers I need to get to. There's seven I need to avoid. So why not make it easy? Keep on the five that are good. Now, when should you really start this counting down math counting philosophy? I'd say at a minimum, you should start when you're on about 310. The reason is because a 140 from 310 puts you on 170, and that is a checkout. All right, what do we normally score here in the photo? What are our normal scoring numbers? Once in a while, 180. More often 140, lots of hundreds, right? Lots of 81, 85s, lots of 57s to 60s, lots of 40 to 45s, and some, you know, 20s to 26s, and very occasionally 3 through 11s, right? But where we're going to live most of the time is in these middle numbers between 100 and 40. That's where the bulk of our throws are going to come in. So we're going to apply this idea, the idea that we certainly are capable any time of walking up and throwing a 180 or 140, mostly 140, to where we count. And so that's why I suggest 310, because it's the highest checkout that a 140 gets you to a finish. So let's look at all these numbers above 300. I don't want to have to do every single thing here, so I'm going to kind of breeze through this. But the concept will apply the whole way through. All right, so these are the numbers between 300 and 310. And from these numbers, we're thinking what two treble score puts us on a finish, right? That's what we should be thinking in these numbers because we're two trebles away from getting to checkout range. So 310 I already talked about is the 20s for 140. 309, what do we need to score from 309 to get to one of these numbers? Well, 139 is the answer. So we want to start on 19s there, okay? There's two ways to score 139, by the way. That single 19 and two treble 20s that I just illustrated, or treble 19, treble 19, 25 will do it as well. But you want to start on 19s. 308, what do we need to score? We need to score 138 to get to 170. So how are we going to score 138? Well, of course, we're going to start on 18s. 307, what do we need to score to get to a finish? Well, 140, that'll work. Puts us on 167 or 170 with a 137 scored. So 20s are fine. For 140, if you, you know, throw a blocking dart in there, it's fine to come down to 19s for 137. 306, 19s. Either single and treble 19 and a treble 20 for 136, or single 19, treble, treble for 139. 18s. You have a bit of an option on this one. Uh, I'm sorry, 305. Eight, 18s is typically the route. Because again, you need a 138 to get to a finish. However, I sometimes like to start on the treble 20. If I hit the treble, I'll move to the bowl and then back up to the treble 20. Because 145 gets us to a finish also. 
304, 140 gets us to a finish at 20s. 303. How can we easily get to a finish there? Well, 139 will do it, but also 133 will do it. So we want to start on 19s there, because 133, as I hope you know, is 719s. 302, again, with the 18s here. Two ways to do it. Uh, 138 will work, so single 18, treble 20, treble 20. Or 132 will work, which is treble 18, single 18, treble 20. So you kind of always need to know these little multi-treble combos too, but that's a story for another time. And then the last one, 301, 20s. Okay, 140 gets us there. That's a quick overview. But the idea here is not what you're hitting, but what you're thinking in your head. Okay, the goal is to get to a checkout. So if I walk up to the board with 304, I should think, what do I need to score to get to a checkout? I need to score 140. So if I throw a treble 20 and then a blocking dart here, okay, into the 20, I know I have two options. A 140 I know will get me there. So I can move, maybe come in from an angle over here to the treble. But if I'm counting down, right, I know at this point I have 224 left and one dart remaining. So I know that I can also hit treble 19 or treble 18 to both get to a finish. So that's the importance of counting down. You kind of understand where you are. And the goal, again, is to get to a finish. Another crucial range, okay, is the numbers right above 100 higher than the bogey range. So 270, 269, 268, 267. Excuse me, 266, 265, 264, 263, 262. My goodness. And 261, okay? These numbers are even more commonly mathed poorly because, again, what is a common score that we can throw? 100, right? A ton is a pretty common throw for us. So we should be thinking, what do we need to throw from here to leave a finish? And planning on maybe throwing a ton or like a single treble visit, right? So obviously a ton from 270 leaves 170, so 20s is fine. But a ton from 269 leaves 169. That is a bogey. So you need to be aware that 99 is what you need to score from 269 to get to a finish. So I personally just like to start on the 19s from a first start and then move up here to score 99. Uh, but if you want to start on 20, move down to 19 and come back, you can too. What I don't recommend is starting on the 20 on your first two darts. Because now if you go single, single, there's no way for you to get to a finish. So one of your first two darts in this range needs to be on the appropriate target. So 19 is important here. 268, same idea, okay, we need 98 to get to a finish, not 99 or 100, so 18 has to be involved in those first two darts. 267, 100 is fine, so 20s are good. In fact, let's just outline all the 21s right now. Okay, obviously 100 more than these numbers are fine to throw 20s. 266, okay, 96 or 99 is what we need to score to get to 167. So we need to start on 19s. We can either hit four 19s and a 20, or we can hit one 19 and four 20s. Either of those scores are appropriate. 265, this is a very common leave and a fun one because you can just stay on 19s. Five 19s scores you 95. So you can just stay there to leave a nice 170 finish. 263. Again, what do we need to score? 99 is what we need to score. So again, I like to start on the 19s and then move my way up. All right, now the other part of this, again, is how are we counting what we have left, right? So if we're starting at 263, I know that single 19 is my first start, then I know I need the 80 here, right? Because I need to score 99. So I know single 19 and 420s equals 99. So if I hit a single 19, I know automatically 
in my head, I'm planning ahead to know to move to the 20s. But I also want to plan ahead what happens when I hit a triple, a treble 19, right? So if I hit a treble 19 on my first start, 57 from 263 is 206, okay? So what I'm going to do is personally stay on 19 and then move to 20s, knowing that 96 will put me on 167. I can also, from 206, say, okay, let's go up to 20s because it's even, 186 now with one dart, 186 I know I need to go back to 19s. However you want to think about it is fine, but we're planning ahead, that's the idea. So I know if I hit a treble, I either need single, single to get there, or if I hit a single, I have to switch up to the top, right? I'm planning ahead my turn before I go. 262 is a very similar one to 266, but just on the 18s. So either four 18s and a 20 will get me there, or a single 18, I know I need four 20s afterwards to get there because I need to score 98. or 92, which four of these, I hope you know, adds up to 72 plus 20 is 92. You see, I'm going a little faster here. This video is supposed to be more advanced, okay? But that's what we should be thinking about when we're a ton ahead. Plan ahead. Those are easy numbers to plan ahead from. Now, when you're in numbers like the 250 range, that's where the counting down comes more into play because, you know, 250, you should be thinking in your head, okay, if I throw a ton, I'm good, right? From 250. But what's inevitably going to happen is you might not throw a ton. You might slip into the one, right? If you slip into the one and then throw a treble 20, what you should be thinking in your head is what you have remaining, which is 189. If you throw another 20, you're going to be on a bogey. You need to be thinking 189 with one dart left. I need to switch to 19s to leave 170, right? That's where the counting down comes into play. I'm trying to highlight here the turns where we're planning ahead. The last section where we really want to plan ahead is below 235. Okay, so we're going to look at these numbers now next. Okay, starting with these five right here. Okay, so why do I say 235? Because that is the highest number where all singles can get you to a finish. Okay, what I mean by all singles is we're integrating now the bowl into our turn. So 235, I know I can score 65, that's two single 20s and a bowl, to get to a finish. So if I go single 20, single 20, I know I need to switch to the bowl on the last start to get to a finish. Of course, if I hit a treble 20 on my first start, at that point I know I can just pound in a good ton and leave with finish, 135, no problem, right? That's already part of the counting down thing. But again, we're planning ahead for what's like our worst case scenario, which is all singles. So here I want to go 20, 20, bowl, okay? 234, same idea. I wanted to start on the 19s, single 19, single 20, bowl, okay? Gets us to the finish at 64 scored. And obviously again, if I'm throwing this here, I know I'm on 177. I can just stay there, I can move, it doesn't really matter at that point. I just want to make sure I leave myself a good number if I'm counting down. One, I'm sorry, 233. Okay, here we want to score 63 with all singles. So two 19s and a bull is 63. Again, 232, 65 is what we want to score. So two 20s and the bull, 65 gets us to 167. Same thing here as 234. Okay, we want to score... 64, so 19, 20, bowl is 64, and then obviously 230 is 23 times gets us to a finish. Okay, the same principle now is going to apply when we're all singles ahead of this number. Again, we're planning ahead our turns. That's the point I want to drive home. I don't want to have to go over every single number here. I want to drive home. We're planning ahead. So let's just look at a couple numbers in this section instead. I hope I don't need to do every single one by now, okay? Let's look at 226. What is common here? I might hit all singles, right? I might hit all single numbers. All singles on 226, if I stay on the 20, 60 scored is a bogey. So I know I need to score 59 from here. So if I go single 20, single 20, 
in my head, I've already planned to switch to the 19 on my third dart. All right, that's the idea. 223 is the same thing. I know that 60 scored puts me on 163. That is a bogey. So I need to get to 164 instead. So I know single 20, single 20, I need to switch to the 19. 221. What am I thinking in my head? 60 scored puts me on 161. That's good. So I can just stay. 20, 20, 20. I'm on a finish. Okay, the idea here is we're thinking ahead. What is something common to score? If we're singles ahead, a singles above the finishing range, we should think what happens if I hit three singles, right? Like if I'm sitting on 226 and my first start is a treble, okay, I have 166 already and two darts left. I don't need to think about necessarily what's going to happen, okay? I know that if I throw in a ton, I'm on 126 and that's a good number. But what I do want to do is plan ahead so I don't go 60, 60, 60 and leave that boat, right? If we're between 260 and 270 left, we want to think of those ton range numbers that put us on a finish. The 99s, the 98s, or a ton, whatever one leads us to finish, we want to plan ahead. And if we're in that 300 to 310 range, we want to think of what two treble visit gets us there. 139, 138, 140, 145, whatever with two trebles is involved to get us to a finish. That's part of the planning ahead. Okay, but the idea is you're thinking ahead and you're counting down at the same time, right? The thinking ahead is for when everything goes well. If I have 269 left, I know I need to throw 99. If I hit a single 19, 20, 20s, or 420s, puts me on 99. If I slop, that's where the counting down comes into play. So that way, if I'm missing left or right, I am counting down as I'm throwing the score. So I know what numbers I have left and when I need to hit in order to leave the finish still if I can do so, right? That's the idea here. That is the best way to avoid bogeys. You want to use a combination of the counting down, but even more important to avoid the bogeys is to plan ahead. Know what you can't hit, know what you can, and shoot for that accordingly. And hopefully, guys, you can avoid those crim eye rolls. Thanks for watching.